a lot of times during the test, you might be presented with very uncomfortable situation to determine how you would behave. This is one of those test questions. You got promoted to the manager role that your colleague at work was also hoping for. Now things are awkward between you two. You want to keep the relationship going, but your colleague is not speaking to you outside of the required communications during the team meetings. You have five choices to select all that apply in order. Choice A. Apologize for the fact that you are promoted over your colleague. Choice B. Ask your colleague about her career aspirations. Choice C. Schedule a meeting to discuss your colleague's feelings. Choice D. Stay professional. Choice E. Prepare the 30-day action plan as a manager of the department. Take a close look, maybe pause this video, give yourself 10 to 15, maybe 20 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Are you ready? I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I think this question is about demonstrating leadership at the higher level of job responsibilities. Let's take a close look. I think you cannot control other people's reactions to your promotion. Typically, the best candidate gets selected for the promotion if there is a competition within the department. Because of this, you should not feel bad that you were selected for the job, and instead of focusing on colleagues' feelings, you should focus on common goal of making department and the company move forward in the marketplace. I think your colleagues' reactions described in this question might be called stonewalling which is one of the ways to demonstrate defensive behavior. Stonewalling means that the person shuts down when feelings are overwhelming during the conflict. Instead of looking inside and finding opportunities to get better and look forward at this experience as potential opportunity, especially when they can't do anything about the changed environment and they find the blame in another person and mentally justify their behavior. Here are some recommended steps how you can respond as a leader in your department. You should not feel bad about what happened. You were selected for promotion for a reason, and there is nothing to apologize for. Number two, you should be empathetic, but do not try to please your colleague. Number three, you should focus on the common goals for the department. You should build a plan to move forward, be a change agent, address all the issues that you've learned about when you were a peer with your colleague, and you should lead by example. Let's look at the key traits assessed in this question. I think the essential traits that are being assessed are empathy, leading by example, and genuinely try to help others. There are also some red flags that this question is trying to look for. For example, feeling guilty and focusing on feelings instead of work deliverables. Based on this, I think that the least recommended choices in order would be choices A and C. Choice A, apologizing for the fact that you were promoted over your friend, and choice C, schedule a meeting to discuss your colleague's feelings. I would say that the most recommended answers would be choices D, E, and B. I think staying strong and maintaining professional behavior is always a good strategy, which gains you respect from peers, management, and company's customers. Instead of focusing on feelings of another person, you should focus on common goals for the department to advance your organization and do it by building an action plan. At the same time, you should genuinely try to help your colleague to advance and ask her about her career aspirations. So my recommended choices in order would be choice D, stay in professional, choice E, prepare a 30-day action plan as a manager of the department, and last but not least, choice B, ask your colleague about her career aspirations. Do you have a better way to solve it? Please make sure to post your answers and rationale in comments. Here's the very interesting question we frequently see on the test. You recently overheard conversation between two people in marketing department about the potential change in the remote work policy, which would require everyone to start coming to the office daily. Currently, you are only required to come into the office two times per week. You are very concerned about this potential change since you are taking care of elderly parent living with you. What should you do next? And you need to select all that apply in order. Choice A immediately schedule a meeting with your manager. Choice B, call HR and confront them about the potential change. Choice C, wait until the next day before taking any actions. Choice D, discuss the issue with your colleague who has connections with the leadership team. And last but not least, 
Choice E, start researching alternative elderly care options. Do you know the answer? Take a close look, maybe pause this video so you can analyze the question and come up with the right choices. Hopefully you've made your selections because I am moving forward on my end to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Let me start with the key considerations an analysis of the facts. Number one, there has not been an official announcement of the change and what person overheard from other people are just rumors and speculations of potential changes and should be treated accordingly. I believe there are a few key considerations to help you select the right answer. Number one is that speculations and rumors of what might happen are very frequent in the workplace and have negative consequences for everyone. Speculations can create emotionally charged environment and strain trust between colleagues. Work quality is affected as well as morale drops significantly. A lot of companies also have policies in place to prevent distribution of misinformation. I think the key to answer this question correctly is to demonstrate emotional control and evaluate what happened based on facts. Until official announcement was made, information you overheard may not be accurate. It is possible you overheard preparation for the official announcement but also it is possible that you might have overheard someone else's speculations and rumors. As a leader in the workplace, you can assess the situation and behave based on facts, setting up an example. So how can you select the right answer for this question? As a leader, you always have an opportunity to evaluate the situation and calibrate your response. Basically, recognize and balance. First of all, you need to evaluate trustworthiness of the sources and if they represent official information. You also need to be able to understand what are available facts. If necessary, you need to gather more information, but without creating anxiety in the workplace. You also always have an opportunity to review alternatives and understand the worst case scenario. This question also evaluates you on self-controlling your emotions. Because the outcome of the potential change is very important to you, it is very easy to get emotional. But it is unclear if the change is going to take place since there was no official announcement yet and it is possible you just overheard rumors and speculations. The best way to approach this situation might be to practice self-control and plan your response instead of reacting emotionally. Considering all this, let's look at how to develop a better self-control because it is very important in answering this question. To better control your emotion, you need to pause to understand what just happened. Some experts recommend pause for 24 hours or longer. It is also important to focus on the things that you can control. In case potential change is implemented, how bad is it going to be? A lot of times the worst case scenario is not catastrophic. And then the last but not least technique, the one which I like the most, is focusing on the positive aspects of the change. Are there anything positive that might happen after the change is implemented? Can you focus on that? I believe that essential traits tested in this question are emotional self-control, stress management, optimism, and maintaining positive attitude, as well as ability to adapt to changing environments and leading others by personal example. Let's look at each one of these traits in more details. Self-control is the ability to navigate through difficult situations without losing the focus. Your ability to maintain anxiety allows you to manage your stress and control impulses and monitor and self-assess your emotions. Positivity in the workplace is contagious and optimistic leaders are able to pursue goals even when they are faced with a lot of obstacles. Change is an essential part of the workplace and leaders that are able to adapt to the change quickly and remain flexible in the changing environment, make better decisions and more valuable to the organizations. I also believe that based on your responses, this question can uncover some red flags in your thought process. Those red flags might be impulsiveness in responses, inability to differentiate facts from rumors and speculations, and creating a drama in the workplace. Some leaders think that time is of the essence and they believe that they need to move quickly to respond instead of evaluating the facts and gathering more information. Impulsive behavior 
typically limits analysis of the information before acting and makes people act without thinking about the consequences. Most of the time, people that demonstrate impulsive behavior, as well as people that do not know how to handle emotionally charged situations, create drama in the workplace. Based on this, I believe choices A, B, D, and E are the choices to avoid. Choice A – Immediately schedule a meeting with your manager. You do not have enough information to schedule a meeting with the manager since there are no facts to discuss. Choice B – Call HR to confront them about the potential change. Very similar situation, you might be creating a drama without evaluating the facts. Choice D – Discuss the issue with your colleague who has connections with leadership team. Colleague may not know anything about this and approaching the colleague with this information will just spread the rumors. And last but not least, choice E, start researching alternative elderly care option. Even though this is always a good thing to do to have a backup plan, at this point it's not justified to spend time doing this activity. Companies are looking for leaders with strong emotional self-control that can deal with challenges, maintain focus, and navigate challenging situations. Postponing actions and response until factual information is available is the best choice in a lot of situations. By practicing self-control, you can also create a precedent in the workplace and set a good example for your colleagues. So based on this information, my recommended answer is choice C. Wait until the next day before taking any actions. Do you have a different thought process or different choices that you would recommend? Please make sure to post your answers and suggestions in comments. Here's the very interesting question you might frequently see in the recent tests. During virtual meeting, one of the participants is actively consuming lunch, which creates a lot of frustration for you since you can't concentrate. As a team lead, you scheduled the discussion during the lunch hour since this was the only time available, as you need to finalize a design solution for your project. What would you do next? And you have five different choices and you need to select all that apply in order. Choice A. End the meeting as quickly as you can with the reason that you can't concentrate. Choice B. Immediately after the meeting, contact the participant who was actively eating and discuss the inappropriate behavior. Choice C. Thank everyone for joining the meeting during lunch hour. Choice D. Make a humorous comment at yourself for not being able to concentrate. And last but not least, choice E, meditate after the meeting to calm down and practice meditation on how to concentrate better. Not an easy question, would you agree? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. And on my end, I'm going to move forward and share with you my version. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. When sharing with you my answer, I need to acknowledge that everyone is different and your choices for this particular question might be different as well. What's interesting is that this question doesn't have a single obvious answer and is designed to test your particular personality. Multiple complex aspects of personality and leadership are tested in this question. There is no obvious answer, but solution to this challenge might be guided based on a few considerations. As you're probably well aware, virtual team meetings became a reality of corporate work after COVID-19. And even though remote work provides more flexibility to people, for example, it eliminates the commute, some aspects of remote work make it more stressful. For example, reaching alignment on an issue, or resolving a critical problem, or meeting a deadline. Due to the isolation, it is also much easier to experience high level of anxiety irritability and reach burnout during the remote work. Companies recognize this trend and train their leaders to respond to remote work challenges. They also test job candidates to make sure they possess necessary traits. To successfully answer this question, I recommend practicing servant leadership and try to understand and appreciate other team members when answering this question. I believe that the key themes tested in this question are sympathy, appreciation and self-control. Obviously, there are multiple different ways to look at this issue, but in general, candidates for the leadership positions are regularly tested on the sympathy and appreciation skills needed for the position. 
conflict in this question is created since team leads scheduled a meeting during the lunch hour. All participants choose to spend lunch time with the team lead to help him or her to solve the problem and meet the deadline. Team lead in this question has multiple ways to demonstrate appreciation to other team members. For example, team lead can change the mental message about what's happening. Another thing, unless others complaining, team lead can control reactions and emotions. In addition, in the described scene, since meeting is scheduled during the lunch hour, it is expected that the people will consume lunch during this time. And also, leaders are expected to demonstrate sincere appreciation of people joining the meeting during lunch hour to help meet the deadline. People in leadership position can demonstrate better leadership and lead by example. Some behaviors, though, might be considered non-professional. For example, abruptly ending the meeting for no reason or non-justified reason. Another thing, creating a drama and contacting an employee to discuss perceived inappropriate behavior. Team lead may not know what else is going on in this person's life, and giving somebody a benefit of the doubt might be a good guide for the next step. Some things for seasonal leader to consider might be what else is going on in this person's life. Maybe team member doesn't have any other reasonable options to eat lunch due to the schedule conflicts. Or maybe a person is stressed out or burned out and contacting the person would be the last straw to start a fire. Just because of the positional power team lead can do something doesn't mean that he or she should do it. Key traits that are tested in this question are sympathy, appreciation, self-control, humility and benefit of the doubt. In remote work environment, it is especially easy to make a mistake, misjudge someone, lose temper, and misunderstand the situation. Also, depending on your own internal level of stress, it might be hard to practice self-control. Also, using your positional power as a team lead to dictate your, in quotes, unreasonable way of doing things may lead to team's disengagement. In remote work environment, it is especially hard to know what else is going on in team members' life and it is very easy to misjudge and make a mistake. I believe that the red flags this question is looking for is lack of appreciation for team members, mismanagement of anger and frustration, and unreasonable and unjustified use of positional power. And here is why these traits are red flags. Leaders who acknowledge and appreciate their team members will have a happier and more motivated workforce. It's important for people leader to be able to balance their emotions and practice self-control. Sometimes using positional power is justified. But it is unwise for a leader to create a conflict and lose control based on the fact that someone is consuming lunch during the lunch hour scheduled meeting. In addition, also making a humorous comment about yourself and acknowledging an individual personal issue can a lot of times discharge tense situation. Based on all of this information, the least recommended answers might be choices A and B. Choice A, ending the meeting as quickly as you can with the reason that you can't concentrate, may not be a good choice. And choice B, immediately after the meeting, contacting the participant who was actively eating and discuss the inappropriate behavior may be unreasonable and unjustified use of positional power. Considering sympathy, appreciation, self-control, humility and benefit of the doubt being essential traits for a good leader, I would recommend choices C, D and E being the most recommended answers. The goal of a leader is to demonstrate servant leadership, appreciate everyone joining the meeting and focus on the end goal for the discussion which is finalized design for the solution. Based on this, my recommended answers are in order. Choice C. Thank everyone for joining the meeting during lunch hour. Choice D. Make a humorous comment at yourself for not being able to concentrate. And last but not least, choice E, continue improving yourself and meditate after the meeting to calm down and practice meditation on how to concentrate better. Do you have any other suggestions? Please make sure to post them in comments. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for all your endorsement, support and patronage. For additional helpful information, please make sure to check out links in the description. For detailed list of available resources, I encourage you to check out resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net resources. If you know someone 
who would benefit from this content, please consider sharing the link. Please leave the feedback, corrections or suggestions in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.